In this video we're going to talk about something you probably wish you didn't have to ever see again, and that's the Taylor series approximation. Uh, this is something you covered in a calculus course. We're going to actually use it quite a bit in some derivations in this fluid mechanics course. Um, and I just wanted to give you a, a physical feel for what a Taylor series approximation is. The idea behind a Taylor series is, let's say we have some function y, it's a function of x, and uh, we know, let's just say at some value x, we know the value of y. Okay, so we're going to say that we know the value of y at this red point. Okay. Now, uh, what we use a Taylor series for is to approximate what the value of y is at some other point. So if we move some short distance away, x plus dx, dx here just means a small displacement in the x direction. So just a small distance away, if I want to find the value at x plus dx, which would be y at x plus dx, if I want to know the value here, how do I find it? So I, what I'm trying to do here is use the red point to approximate the value at this blue point. Okay. Now with the Taylor series, the mathematical approach, if you recall, the way this works is the value of y at x plus dx is the value of, of, of y at x, and then you take the slope, dy over dx evaluated at x times how far we've moved, which was dx. And then you take the curvature, which would be d squared y over dx squared, time, evaluated at x times dx squared, and you keep doing this. Uh, actually, I take it back. It's dx squared over 2 factorial. Sorry about that. And you can do the same thing for higher orders. So let, let me just go out to d cubed y over dx cubed. And you just continue on. So that's a Taylor series for just this function of one variable. You can do this idea, by the way, with multiple variables. We're just going to do it with one here. So that's the Taylor series approximation. Now you can see that as you get, uh, as dx gets smaller and smaller, so basically as we're approaching the value of x, what happens is the dx squared term, dx cubed terms, these get extremely small compared to dx, right? They're getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and so we call these higher order terms and we can neglect them as dx gets small. So y at x plus dx will just be y at x, just the original value, which is this value right here, plus the slope of the line, the slope of the curve at x, that's dy over dx, times dx. So I'll put a little approximate sign there. This is as dx gets very, very small, right? Because the dx squared term is much, much smaller than dx, and dx cubed is even, even smaller than that, and so on and so forth. Now if you look at this expression, that's just the equation of a line, right? So this is kind of your, your starting point, y at x. So presumably you know this value. This is the slope of your line, and this is how far you've moved. So really, let me just kind of sketch the line out here what we're doing is we're, we're drawing a line through this point right there where the slope of that line is dy over dx evaluated at x. And so what we're doing is we're saying that this expression right here is just, it's what we're getting is this point that I'm drawing as an x. So that's our value, this value of x here is this equation. And you can see that it's not, you know, there, there's a little bit of an error here, but that error gets smaller and smaller and smaller as dx gets smaller. So you can see if I was right here, very close to x, the error would be very small. In the limit as dx goes to zero, it becomes just right. What these extra terms do, like the dx uh, squared term, that takes into account the curvature of this function. So all these higher order terms here take into account different types of curvature here to get our approximation better and better. So really what a Taylor series is, is it's a way for us to approximate the value of some function 
close to if you if you know the value at some some point you can approximate the value at some nearby point and the way we're doing it is just through basically the equation of a line we're just approximating it by drawing a line through the original point with the proper slope and then we're just using this x value here as the approximation to the blue point and again that that value gets better and better as you get closer to x now where we'll use this um, so I just want to just show you this from a more physical point of view than, rather than a mathematical one. And then way way we'll use this is, um, I'll just give you a quick preview, is when we have forces acting on a small object. So let's say I had some small uh, piece of material, and I have a force acting on it down here, let's call it F, acting upward. And if this is very small, call it DZ, then the force up here would be the force I start with, F, plus how F changes with Z, times how far I've moved, DZ. So you can see that this expression is kind of like this. This is the force I start with. Here it's F instead of Y of X. And then the force nearby will be F plus how that force changes with respect to the displacement. Here it's DF, DZ times how far I've moved, dz. So when you do kind of the net sum of the forces in the z direction here, you'll have f pointing upward, you'll have f plus df dz times dz pointing downward, and you'll end up getting a minus df dz times dz as your net force. You're going to see this more clearly when we start doing uh, derivations that rely on this approximation. This is just a little bit of a preview to show how we're going to use this. We'll use it when we're balancing forces typically to find uh, what the net force is. So the first place that you'll see this is when we do the hydrostatic pressure relation derivation. We'll, it'll show up there. So anyway, I'll go ahead and end it there. I just wanted you to see um, how Taylor series come about from a more physical point of view, you know, what they mean. It's basically just trying to approximate the value of something using the equation of a line through your original point.